You don't associate pro wrestling with unsolved mysteries very often, but maybe you should. Over the years, WWE has concluded more than a few storylines that have left the audience confused and without closure, while there are also many troubling real life stories involving wrestlers that aren't black and white either. My name is Sami, and today Wrestling Hub brings you 10 insane unsolved mysteries of the WWE. The infamous pipe bomb, who could ever forget? Back in the summer of 2011, CM Punk cut a promo airing his grievances with the WWE and calling out various higher ups in the company, including the McMahons. Surprisingly, WWE let him go on for a while, which has sparked debate over whether this is a work or not. Regardless, just as things were about to get really interesting as Punk began talking about Vince and WWE's anti-bullying program, his microphone was cut, effectively silencing him. The mystery here is of course, what the hell was this story that was so bad WWE had to cut him off? And more generally, what else would Punk have said after that point? He himself has never clarified, leaving it up to fans to speculate. Back in the day, Shawn Michaels, the heartbreak kid, is confirmed to have been sleeping with female talent Sonny, who was married, but he also made a seemingly outrageous accusation that Bret the Hitman Hart was doing the same on live WWE TV. Now just to clarify, Michaels was single at the time, while Hart was married and had a family. Bret Hart was absolutely livid, mostly because his kids watched him religiously. He later admitted that he did have several affairs during his time with the company but HBK's claim has never been proven, and Hart denied any involvement with Sonny. I really don't know who I should be believing here. Something a little more recent, it would seem WWE blatantly lied about attendance numbers for the record-breaking WrestleMania 32. The story goes that Vince McMahon's goal was to break the 100,000 mark for attendance in 2016, but when it didn't happen, WWE fudged the numbers. Sources say that the attendance was actually under 80,000, while others say it was in the low 90s, but very few if any corroborate WWE's 100,000. Now it depends on who you want to believe, but with these conflicting reports, we can't say for sure if WWE really did break the attendance record for WrestleMania. Another possible scandal involving WWE and deceit is centered around Vince Russo, a former WWE employee who moved over to competitor WCW in 1999. Now at this point, WWE's Attitude Era was in full swing and they were winning the Monday Night Wars, and Russo helped create that, but things conveniently got worse for WCW when Russo came aboard. The storylines tanked and matches became more and more absurd at the hands of Russo. I'm positive most WCW fans would agree in saying Vince Russo put the final nail in the coffin for the company, and that is where the mystery lies. Was Russo secretly working for WWE to bring down its rival from the inside? I wouldn't put that past Vince. Remember the whole Vince McMahon was killed in a limo explosion storyline? Still sounds absurd every time I say it. Anyways, we all know the plan was canned after the death of Chris Benoit and Vince returned, but the story itself begs some interesting questions. Who exactly tried to kill Vince McMahon in the first place? My first guess would be one of his kids, but then the internet showed me this. Paul goddamn London. Why the hell is he smiling like that as Vince walks to his limo? Another possible culprit was Mr. Kennedy, who was rumored to use the storyline to be pushed to the main event. The other part of this was obviously, how would things have played out from there? What was the plan for replacing Vince? Though conspiracy theories exist, most people are under the impression that Owen Hart's death in 1999 was simply an accident. Owen was ziplining to the ring as part of his gimmick before falling over 70 feet to his death. Now how this accident occurred is up to debate. Some say Owen was uncomfortable with the gimmick and was trying to unhook himself but accidentally launched instead without all necessary safety precautions. Another, which comes from Owen's wife, that he was trying to get comfortable within the harness but somehow caused it to release. Jim Cornette maintains it was a crazy, stupid idea from the mind of our good friend Vince Russo and claims that Russo cut corners in order to get Owen into the ring faster by opting for a less secure but easier to operate harness. If that one wasn't dark enough for you, try this one. In the early 1980s, cops were called to the hotel room of Jimmy Snuka where they found the beaten carcass of his known mistress, Nancy Argentino. Snuka maintained he was out and found her like this after he returned, though even the authorities weren't keen on his story. Snuka, a top superstar at the time, was aided by Vince McMahon in helping the charges go away. However, the case was never officially closed, and in late 2015, Snuka was charged with murder. Earlier this year, Jimmy went to court, but his lawyers managed to convince the judge that due to his dementia, onset by multiple concussions suffered as a wrestler, he was not able to partake in the hearings. 
It was then decided Snorka was unfit to stand trial, thus we will never know for sure who killed poor Nancy Argentino. The Montreal Screwjob will forever be known as the WWE's pinnacle of conspiracy and mystery inside the ring. The story goes, Bret Hart's contract was about to expire while he was champion, thus WWE needed him to lose it. The Hitman didn't want to drop the title to Michaels at the pay-per-view in Canada, but was willing to do so the next night on Raw. However, Vince was not okay with this, so he, Michaels, and the WWE conspired against Bret to make things go their way. As Michaels put Hart in a sharpshooter, Vince prematurely made the referee ring the bell and call the match. HBK made off with the title, while Bret was visibly furious and in disbelief. He spat in the face of Vince McMahon, before writing WCW in the air. Now this one seems to be split quite evenly, with many believing this was 100% real while others claiming it was a work. What do you think? One of the craziest WWE related mysteries has to do with Macho Man Randy Savage and Stephanie McMahon. Despite being one of the most iconic wrestlers of his generation, WWE rarely mentioned the Macho Man on TV after he departed, and was only inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2015. The reason for this may come back to a supposed relationship with the boss's daughter, Stephanie. Now things get weird here because Savage was in his 40s while Stephanie would have been a teenager. I'm not saying anything illegal went down because I have zero proof, but even if she was of age, this still made Randy look really bad. Adding fuel to the fire, former WWE employees have come out saying they were instructed to never ever mention Savage's name around Vince, which adds some credibility to the story. A controversial pick no doubt, there are many out there that believe Chris Benoit did not in fact commit the crimes he's accused of, but was instead framed. The story of Benoit, if you're unaware, was that a combination of mental health issues, concussions, and drug problems caused Benoit to go crazy and kill his wife and son before taking his own life. There are definitely some wild theories out there, but there are some interesting ones too. One is that Kevin Sullivan, the ex-husband of Nancy Benoit, was behind the murders. Though there is no physical proof, he did at one point swear to kill Chris for stealing his wife from him. Another piece of contradictory information lies with Chris Benoit's neighbor who worked closely with the family's dogs. He stated that he encountered former WWE superstar Dave Taylor walking to the house that same day. Taylor says he was at an event that weekend, though there's no record of him being booked to appear. Where do you fall on Chris Benoit's guilt? And those are 10 insane unsolved mysteries of the WWE. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Also, if I left anything out, please feel free to leave a comment below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.